Hey everybody, what's up? I thought today I'd talk about something that is really, really misunderstood in the industry. So in the financial professional industry, there's a lot of securities licenses and there's a lot of requirements. And so there's a lot of confusion naturally that happens. So I get this question a lot from both the new people that are in our course, as well as people that are say licensed and they're working for Big Brother somewhere. They're out at the big brokerage firms or the large banks and they don't understand that they actually don't need some of the exams that they've taken in the past in order to operate as an entrepreneurial independent uh, financial advisor that is fee only, that is advice based, right? So I wanna go through the different exams a little bit today and I put together some courses, got a lot of materials. If you click the link below, I've got some free training. Sign up on our website so you get a lot of this content because I'm really trying to help you break free, right? So I want you to understand these things. So I just thought I'd do this video. I just got off the phone with a, a gentleman that's been in the business a long time. He's actually working for a brokerage firm. He's an insurance guy and a CPA, and he was really confused on what he needed and didn't need. So I'm gonna go through this really quickly for you. If you want more information, like I said, I've got some courses, some mini courses on this that go into much more detail. So many people that are in the business today or are looking at getting into the securities business, maybe you're a finance student or you work at a bank now and you're interested in getting into it, or you're in it, have taken or are looking at taking this thing called the Series 7. It's the most common one. Most people know about it. They know how difficult it is. And they know a few things about it, like don't I have to be sponsored by an organization like a brokerage firm in order to get my licensing, Patrick, is a question I get a lot. And the answer is, if you're going to be a broker and you're going to get your Series 7, and oftentimes people have a combination of a Series 7 and what's called a Series 63, you do need to be sponsored. And that's where some of this confusion starts. So I'm going to walk through what is the 7 mostly, and I'll throw in 63. Sometimes people have a 7 and a 66, which is a, a little bit more comprehensive exam and is a good one if you've taken it. If you have that one, contact me and I'll show you how to get launched really quickly on your independent firm. But, so what is the Series 7? It's called the GSRQE for short. It stands for the General Securities Representatives Qualification Exam. So basically what it's doing is it's a pretty comprehensive exam. It's uh, 260 questions. I think only 250 of them count. There's, you know, it's a full day exam. It's, it's really comprehensive but it qualifies those that pass it to be a solicitor to purchase and or sell all securities, products that are out there. So you're licensed basically with a Series 7 to buy and sell securities. That's what your license is. So you're licensed as a salesperson. You understand the securities laws, you know, you know that you have to disclose uh, things about the cost of a mutual fund or ETFs, these kinds of things. You can buy and sell stocks and bonds. There's a lot of things you can do with it, but it all has to do with solicitation and the buying and selling of securities. It has nothing to do with qualifying you to be an advisor of any sort. It's actually a minimum requirement. It's not like now I've got a master's degree. It's a basic minimum agreement. Or, or understanding once you have these things on how to be a salesperson of financial products. So huge thing, a lot of people that have this exam think they've climbed kind of the mountain of the, you know, the holy grail is now theirs. They've passed this really arduous securities exam and they're qualified to go out and give advice. Um, they're actually not. So they're qualified to sell. They are brokers, right? They are registered representatives of a brokerage firm. That's what you are when you have this exam. The 63 is a uniform state securities agent, and they use the word agent exam. So this is a comprehensive uh, securities exam on state law, where it differs from federal law. The seven is federal law. So it's, it's just an additional, it's a small exam uh, relative to the series seven. Okay, and that's a most common uh, combination of licenses that I see out there. The other one that I do see out there is the 66, sometimes here. All right, so how does that compare with the 65? So when I'm teaching you to go on your own, to be independent, to be a fee-only entrepreneurial advisor, 
What you need to know is that you don't need these exams at all. So if you have them, you can let them go. I had these two, I had the 65, and I had my life and health exams for many, many years. But you can let those go. If you don't have this one, you'll need to take it if you don't have this guy right here, if you don't have the 66. So if you're new to the business, I'm gonna teach you how to get ready for the 65 and take that. If you're already in the business and you have a 66, you're good. But if you don't, if you just have this combination here, you're gonna to need to go take the Series 65 if you want to be an advice-based practitioner, right? So the Series 65 is administered by FINRA. It's called the Uniform Investment Advisor Law Exam. It's 130 questions. They throw in 10 experimental questions every year that don't count, so you really take 140. You have to pass 94 of them, which is 72%, 94 of the 130. You have to get correct. And it is an exam of memorization of securities law, right? And some fundamental things around economics and a few other things. Like I said before, in the link that you'll see in this video, I have some other courses and things that'll teach you how to prepare for that exam, be ready to go. This exam is all that you need to be an investment advisor, right? To be a financial advisor on your own, no brokerage firm, nobody to share with, anything like that. You would have, when you're done with this, you would be able to have what's called an RIA, a registered investment advisory firm. This is your business. And then you would be an IAR, an investment advisor representative of that business. So this exam is the only exam you really need to do what it is that I'm teaching. And you don't need to be sponsored by some firm. You can actually go to FINRA's site and get registered yourself. If you're already in the business, there's some distinctions. So there's a U10 and a U4. And I go into that in great detail. I'm not gonna go into that today. What I really want you to get clear on is if you have these exams already on, under your belt, if you will, and you wanna get away from the sell side of the business, so the sales side, and you wanna get into the advice side, you need to get this exam, right? And then you can go off onto your own and um, charge asset under management fees, financial planning fees, consultation fees, hourly fees, monthly fees, however you wanna structure that, uh, that makes sense for the types of clients you work with. You're gonna need that exam. If you're new to the business and you wanna start your own uh, firm like I'm teaching in my courses, all you need is this one and you don't need to be sponsored. Okay, so I hope that helps. Lots of confusion. If you have more um, questions around this, you know, DM me and I'm happy to help you. Sign up below. I've got a lot of content on our YouTube channel here. So sign up for that. Get out to my website. I've got some free training that I'll link to this video as well. And then get into my courses, get into our content. I'm really here to try to change the industry. I don't think this part of the industry serves the advisor very well. It really serves the big firm. And I don't think it serves their clients very well. And I wanna show you how to do this. I wanna help you launch your own firm. So I appreciate you. Have a great day and we'll talk soon.